When you're looking for a moderate hike in Glacier, consider hiking up to Pigan Pass via the Sun Road Trailhead. The trail begins by following the creek. The well-traveled trail then doubles back as it climbs. The trail crosses a creek several times. On a hot sunny day, the shade from the trees may be welcome, but the forest is dense and the views of the mountaintops are few. Every once in a while though, a peak will poke through. Wildlife seem to like this wooded area also, so it's very important to be alert. And yes, this is bear country. On this early September day, bear scat sightings were nearly as frequent as creek crossings. So common bear precautions must be taken. For the most part, you're surrounded by trees, and the canopy is dense, covering the trail. The trail is very heavily tree-lined. A few trails intersect with this one, and the Park Service has done a good job of providing easy-to-follow signs to point you in the right direction. Just after the last fork in the trail, at about the three-mile point, the trail opens up. The nearby mountain peaks are no longer obstructed. And to me, this is the interesting part. For about a quarter of a mile, the track runs parallel to the ridge and over a scree field. By now, most of the climbing is over. There's only about 300 more vertical feet to the pass. The fascinating thing about this section is, well, because it's so open, the brain doesn't quite know what to make of it. I ran into one couple who had enough before even crossing half the scree field. When I asked why, they said, well, they couldn't really explain it, but they both had this odd and overexposed feeling, so they decided to turn around. Walking on the scree is easy. The slope of the trail is gentle, and the side slope isn't steep. Of course, I'm right next to a glacier. Walking on this thing is actually not difficult. It's just that it's a little stressful and that it's kind of vertigo-y. It's so tall and high and wide and big. The West is big. So why do people get this odd feeling? Well, it's probably because all of the visual reference points are so far away. The straight as an arrow trail is over a mile long. The ridge up the slope is a few thousand feet above. The road is miles away and 1,500 feet below. And the opposite peaks are several miles away. There's simply no reference points. I've hiked the Highline Trail many times, and in places it's only about three feet wide, and I've never had a feeling like I have here. So the only thing I can think of is it must be the distance, the reference points. It just throws your body out of whack. But to me, this was the most enjoyable part of the trail. After 30 minutes, you're off the scree. A few hundred more yards, and you're to the pass. Well, folks, here we are. We can pass. I can pass. In two hours and 20 minutes or so to walk up. 1,700 feet, four and a half miles. And this is the view. It's not bad. You know, the lake down there is probably the coolest thing. For a minute, I thought about climbing one. The small blue lake was an interesting reminder that this pass was covered by ice not all that long ago. At a slow pace and allowing for plenty of time to take photos and shoot this video, it took less than two and a half hours to get to the pass. It took about an hour and a half to get back down. After a little exploring and a lunch break, it was time to head back down the Pigan Pass Trail. The day of the hike, the temperature was in the mid-50s. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. The next day, as the weather tends to do in the mountains, things had changed. A few inches of snow had fallen, and fog obscured the trail. 